today we're going to be talking about a subject which has, uh, over the last uh, 15 years, changed dramatically in terms of how often and its significance. Uh, in uh, performing testing in the field, uh, winding resistance was considered a, a more rare uh, test that we conducted as we could, but it was very difficult to do as we did not have the same types of equipment that are available to us today. In looking at this first slide, what we're talking about is not such a simple device as, as uh, we think of when we see a transformer. The transformer is representative in a very complex or in a complete manner, and you, the complexity other than the winding resistance which we seek to uh, achieve is shown in the uh, reddish colors. Uh, the other components do affect our result. We'll, we'll talk about some of those methods of improving that, uh, uh, obtaining the results in, in a system. Why we actually test winding resistance is uh, is quite clear. It has uh, proven to be a very good diagnostic tool and one that gives us predictive uh, values that we can use in determining the future direction or required maintaining our transformers. We see tap changer tap changers especially. This is a this, this is the only moving stresses, and so it becomes the primary reason we perform. And we will focus on, on this area as as uh, as well. We also want to detect or locate partial dead or, uh, or dead shorted turns. We look for secondarily, actually, loose crimping, and that's typically after. Uh, manufacturing, as well as under some strains and stresses that the transformers uh, encounter during operation. You can see this is one <clears throat> more uh, usually subjected to by factory, where we're looking for the copper losses of the transformer as they are required as part of the uh, specifications. We finding resistance to measure winding temperature, that's a very common use when we're performing things such as dry out or in the factory when we want to know the winding temperature once we've heated the transformer for proper cooling down. As well, uh, we, we now want to talk about the principle of measurement. So when we think of a winding, we think of a inductance, and it is the resistance that we care about, but it is the inductance of the winding which is dominant when we first begin the test. As we're applying DC, the one issue that we do have, uh, change amps to whatever our test current is, the inductance is dominant until such time as our current stabilizes. And once it stabilizes, then we are left with just uh, and the resisting itself together with the tap connections. And with that, if we have the current and we have the resistance or the voltage, we now are able to determine the resistance. And this is a principle of measurement which many of us are, are commonly uh, understanding. Well, when we're talking about this, technically what we need to do is we need to change the, the current to be at zero. So for it to be at zero, we need for the transformer core to saturate. In order for the transformer to saturate, uh, uh, we apply times seconds. And in the seconds, that is the time that is required. And if you look at this picture in front of you, you will see that the amount of time uh, needed would be higher, as your experience would tell you, based on, in this case, the voltage rating of that transformer. The time to stabilize might be very different from something like a pull top or, or even um, any of your uh, 
small power transformers. 